jumping through flaming tables. That's and right. They, they finally make playoffs last year, and then it's right. a quick elimination. So I think with them, they were given very little reason to ever believe anything great would happen, where the Vikings are one of the all-time great franchises in the NFL mm. in the regular season. That's right. <laughs> and then have always just gotten so <laughs> close. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in every decade, That's they right. have reason to believe that they would be a real contender. One and good run. It always comes up a little bit short. That's right. Over for four in the Super Bowl. Don't think I need to remind anybody about that right now. I do need to remind everybody here at Lucky's, 20 minutes left for breakfast foods and items right now. A quick reminder as well, Mother's Day, get your reservations in. It gets packed in here. They have a phenomenal breakfast brunch. So make sure you talk to your server or a manager about getting signed up for reservations here at Lucky's. What else you got? All right, Matthew Collar, ESPN 1500. Favorite Vikings pick of this draft? Wow. So the Vikings draft is really interesting from this question because when you're talking about the second round pick, Brian O'Neill, no one is really happy with them not getting a day one starter on the offensive line. But at the same time, Brian O'Neill has the potential and the athleticism to eventually be a really great tackle. So in a way, I love that draft pick because of who he is and because he compares athletically to some of the best tackles in the NFL. At the same time, the second round can't really be looked at as a success because they didn't come away with one of the guards that would have been a starter this year. Matt, working for ESPN, I know you're one of the best draft analysts out there, and I want to pick your brain for a second. Just as a surface fan, I think offensive tackle, or offensive line in general, I think these, these are the meatheads. It's big, <laughs> strong kind of uh, bullies, if you will, on the team. And when you talk about Brian O'Neill, everybody says athlete, athletic, he can move around. How long is it going to take, in your estimation, if ever, for him to kind of get that strength, that NFL kind of functional strength back on, and kind of get that bully mentality that you need to play offensive tackle in the NFL? I mean, college at Pittsburgh's one thing, but play in the NFL, especially in this division, Chicago Bears. Detroit Lions had a great draft. Green Bay Packers. Uh, that's that's a different jump now for him. I think it's it's not only that. I, I don't really hate his mentality or anything from the tape that I've watched right. on him so far and, and continuing to go through that in his last season of what I can find with Pitt. It's not so much that he didn't like to hit people because you'd see him in space, especially when he gets out to the second right. level. Right, good. Yeah, I thought he was good in that area. It's more of just when you watch a whole game and every play from him, it's... There are four or five where it doesn't go technically how he wanted it to go. And even though he wasn't giving up a lot of sacks and a lot of hits and pressures, you could see, okay, something didn't quite go right there, and it was too often with him. And then you add to the fact that he is susceptible to really uh, strong defensive ends right. plowing him backward. That's a concern, too. And, and you look at this guy as someone who... This year gets a chance to develop, then next year you start to grow and maybe you're the starter then. It's not really what Vikings fans wanted to no. hear from their offensive line. Super Bowl run right now, and, right? And it also reminds you a little bit of TJ Clemmings where mm. it's, okay, no, next year he's going to be good. And maybe Basketball player started right, late. Right. I, I know, I know. Maybe he'll play right guard and right. he's better. And TJ Clemmings right. just tried to guard in camp last year. That's where if you're a Vikings fan, you get frustrated with that pick. But from the actual player, I really like what you have there. And then I, I think their first round pick is just he's just a football player that he showed up at UCF and dominated. And, and then that's what you want to see that when opposing quarterbacks were throwing in his direction, he was great there. Really that he's quick and he's also strong. And I would compare him in a way because of his size and strength to Captain Motherwick that he wasn't Ooh. the biggest guy, yeah, but in terms of the bench press and things like that and the way he plays, the aggressiveness, the, the competitiveness that he has, right. all those things are really good. So in a bubble, I like both of the draft picks for the players, but the fact that you didn't come away with a Will Hernandez or a Connor Williams right. or one of those guys that could start a guard, I don't think it could be looked at as a success. Okay, we haven't talked a ton about Mike Hughes yet, but there are some red flags around Hughes. There's the off-field issues, the assault charge in 2015. He's only 5'10", only has one real year of college tape. So of those red flags, which clearly the Vikings were willing to accept to take this guy that they loved on film, which of those red flags do you think is most valid that could hurt his stock as an NFL player? I wouldn't be concerned about him as a player. 
because I really like what I see. And every guy who's drafted this high is going to be good when you look at their highlight package. But even then, going back and looking at a couple of games, the, the competitiveness that he plays with I think will translate and the quickness that he has will. And I think he's a, a better athlete than someone like Mackenzie Alexander, that there would have been some concerns there about his size and athleticism. And also Alexander didn't really make plays on the ball when he was in college. Whereas I see Mike Hughes making plays on the ball. I like everything about him as a player. The off-field stuff has to concern you. I don't know sure. how it wouldn't. Right. When you go to one college and then you get in a fight and then get accused of something else and you end up having to leave, it's not like a guy just smoked too much weed. I always say draft the weed Is that guy. possible? <laughs> because, <laughs> draft Larry Tunsil? Yes, draft him because a lot of times... A lot of times those guys drop in the draft, right. and they turn out to be great players. Right. Um, Randy, Shane Ray, Randy, Randy Moss. Moss. Uh, but also, Who'd you say Shane Ray? Yeah, not bad. Janoris Jenkins. Janoris Jenkins. Maybe a good cornerback or Tyron Matthews. That's right. Those are great players who <laughs> only dropped for one reason, and you're like, well, you can deal with that, or you can work around that. What you can't work around is somebody who, when he goes off. The, uh, right. the, the team's campus the is going to get in a fight with somebody. That's what you would be concerned about. But you're also talking about people who are young. It's very hard to know. Last year, there were concerns about Delvin Cook. He got around Teddy Bridgewater and Terrence Newman, and great right. people, Good point. and Good immediately point. Uh, made himself into a professional football player and has carried himself that way since. And